Today's book is Maestro Stew Saves the Zoo. It's written by Denise Brennan Nelson and illustrated by Tim Bowers. That means that the person who wrote the words, Denise Brennan Nelson, the person who drew all the beautiful pictures in this book, Tim Bowers, the illustrator, or the one who draws the pictures. Since he was knee-high to a grasshopper, Stu had been visiting the nearby zoo. He visited so often at, that everyone at the zoo knew him by name, even the animals. At night when the zoo was closed, the animals made music. Living only a block away, Stu and Mama could hear them. Mama called their sounds a symphony. Some nights, the tune was soft and low, and other times, it was upbeat and jazzy. She said it was music to her ears and swayed to the beat while Stu played Maestro, which I bet you can guess when you look at the picture that maestro is another word for music director. When Stu was tucked into bed, as snug as a bug in a rug, he would fall asleep to the animal sound and dream of the place he loved best. But time passed and Stu discovered that not everyone loved the animals as much as he and Mama did. Mr. Cooper wanted to tear the zoo down so he could build a mall, and he had no use for the animals. They would have to go. But first, he would have to convince the city to sell him the zoo. Mr. Cooper went to every city meeting. He rubbed elbows with the fat cats in their ivory tower every chance he got. He patted their pockets, bought them extravagant gifts, and sent them on expensive trips. Before long, city officials were willing to sell him the zoo. A press conference was called to announce the sale of the zoo, and reporters came from everywhere to get the news firsthand. A mall, Mr. Cooper explained, will make the city better. When a reporter asked him about the animals, he brushed them off. They're not my concern. They're just animals. From their cages, the animals watched and listened in disbelief. Doom and gloom settled over the city like a thick blanket of fog as the animals realized that they were going to lose their home. Lion took the bull by the horns. He sent out a memo to every creature in the zoo announcing an emergency meeting. Attend a high priority meeting. No monkey business. Midnight on the dot. Lion's Lane, quarter mile, due south. As the crow flies, mums the word. Late that night, while the security guard was taking a cat nap, the animals gathered to discuss the news. They were in uproar. Polar bear was coming apart at the seams. Pull yourself together, Rhino said. Lion took control. Calm down, everyone. The sloths yawned. Aren't we uh, making a mountain out of a molehill? Your head out of the clouds, Tiger said. They're selling our home. That man is going to get rid of us. Giraffe went weak at the knees. Ram tried to get a grip on himself. And Gazelle, who always wore her heart on her sleeve, sobbed. We have to do something. <laughs> Stu couldn't keep quiet any longer and step out of the shadows. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle, Ape said when he laid eyes on the boy. Stu, what are you doing here at this hour? Elephant asked. 
do held up the memo. I found this. I came to help. Can you save our home? They asked him. No, but you can, he said. What can we do, Wildebeest asked. We're just animals. Yeah, our hands are tied, <laughs> said the penguins, shaking their heads. I have an idea, he said. I know what you can do. The animals wanted to hear more. We're all ears. They listened intently as Stu shared what he had seen and heard from them over the years and how Mama called it a symphony. Maybe their musical talents could help save the zoo. A concert was planned and the details were worked out. The animals left the meeting dog tired, but bound and determined to save their home. In the wee hours of the morning, the animals prepared for their debut. Peacocks fluffed their fellow fe feathers. Elephants took bath, and tuxedo-clad penguins paced. With butterflies in their stomachs, all the animals took their places. The gates opened at precisely 10 a.m. With a ton in hand, Stu conducted the elephants to raise their trunks and play the first note. Slowly, but surely, with cues from Stu, the other animals joined in. Squeaks and bellows, gurgles and chirps, clucks and pitters, grunts and twitters, croaks, snorts and caws, quacks, squawks, brays and whistles, barks and bleats, coos, hoots, wails and whinnies, squeals, hisses and howls, mews and growls. All came together in a symphony of sound. The music filled the zoo and walked into the heart of the city. Everywhere, people stopped and listened. Reporters and camera crews scurried to capture the phenomenon. By the time the animals played the final note, you could have heard him drop. Until a single clap by a young maestro, followed by another and another, became thunderous applause. That night, the animals were on every news channel and their concert was replayed over and over to the lot, the light of all but one. Tickets to the zoo started selling like hotcakes as people came from all around to hear the animal symphony. Day after day, the animals proudly showed off their musical talent to the visitors and the zoo made national news. The zoo was getting so much attention that city officials had a change of heart. A press conference was called to announce their decision not to sell after all. The animals were thrilled that they had saved their home. In honor of Stu, they threw a party. Mr. Cooper was as mad as a wet hen and threw a fit. But what goes around comes around, and Mr. Cooper now has the job he deserves. He is the official poop scooper at where else? The zoo. The end. This book is such a great book, isn't it? Of how when we all come together, make all of our different contributions we can make a huge difference in the world and every single voice matters.